Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Leap of Faith. This is a bit of a Thursday truth episode today. And I'm going to share with you in this session today how you can make sure that the future you that you're creating is someone that when you arrive in that situation, when you arrive in that state, you're actually going to enjoy it. Okay. Now, there's an interesting story I want to share with you. When I first started any form of personal development, any form of business development, one of the most powerful books that I read was Grant Cardone's uh, 10x rule. And it just blew my mind in terms of the thought process, the thinking, the level of activity, the level of action and just how big to think about opportunity. If you haven't listened to that book, highly recommend it. Probably one of the best mindset and thought provoking inspirational business books of all time, I think. Now, the interesting thing and one key piece that I took from that was something that Grant said, which was if you want to meet the devil, um, have a lot of white space on your calendar. So I was like, wow, that's it. Like, Right now I'm broke and I have no money and my calendar is empty. So let's like fill this thing up with God knows how much events, activities, opportunities, just everything. I just want to cram this thing so much so that I'm literally back to back, day in, day out, every single moment of every single day I'm doing something and it is just hot, 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 one thing to another. And so what happened uh, over the course of you know the last two, three, four years is exactly that. The interesting thing is that the thing that you want, you'll often get. So make sure that you are actually sure it's what you want. And the difference between a jail cell and your home is simply the meaning that you attach to it. Right, really, really powerful stuff. And so the busyness and the activity and the levels of activity and the specificity that you can create with your future is almost as important as what you create. And so with myself, for example, I created this environment, this uh, calendar operation where I had events just literally back to back from about seven in the morning through until eight, nine, sometimes 10, 11 p.m. at night, pretty much six days, sometimes even seven days per week. And at the start, I was like, this is amazing. This is fantastic. This is brilliant. And what happens is when you don't check or when you don't align the things that you're doing as much to your bigger picture, your meaning, your purpose, the vision that you have for yourself, the things that you start to do, they start to lose the meaning. Okay. Successful people understand this really, really well that success is kind of boring and (laughs) it's, it's a series of repetitive Um, tasks and activities that get done over and over and over again. And if you aren't able to kind of attach enough meaning and attach enough kind of um, purpose to what it is that you do, then you'll find yourself maybe kind of similar to how I found myself in a situation where you're so busy and you're doing so many things and you're just absolutely back to back from sun up to sundown all the way through until burning the midnight oil. It doesn't matter how long you work, how much you work, uh, how the intensity of your output, how many coffees, how many Adderall, how many, any substance or sup, supplement that you can take to increase your performance. Modafinil is another one. That's the other one I was thinking. And 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 it, like, it, it just doesn't matter. There's, there's, there's just so much that you need to do. And irrespective of how much you do or how hard you work or how much you burn yourself out, it's never going to get done. So this is kind of what happens. And if you're not careful about yourself and your future and where you're headed, you can put yourself into a situation and put yourself into a role, a a career, a business where that can happen for you. And so what I want to help you with today is essentially just kind of really going over the plan or how you attach meaning to what you do more specifically and just revisiting and revising what I've been speaking about a fair bit recently, which is just the necessity and the importance of creating space and creating um, gaps, time, openness in your day, in your week, in your calendar, so that you can actually consciously choose and bring some attention and bring some awareness into what are the things that I'm doing? And secondly, how am I feeling when I'm doing it? All right, because if, listen close to this, if the things that you're doing on a day-to-day basis aren't bringing you a whole heap of joy and happiness and fulfillment, number one, and if number two, when you are doing those things, you feel kind of average for the most part, most of the time, and you're occupying 80, 90% of your calendar space with things that make you feel like that, 
and that don't really have any impact and really don't have any movement in terms of your state and how you feel when you're doing it, then the likelihood of that changing in the future is going to be very, very slim, okay? And so for you to create the future that you want and for you to create the levels of happiness and peace and fulfillment and all those good things that you want in the future, it's really, really, really important to make sure that in that space, in that time that you have or that you place into your calendar, maybe it's a specific day per week where you just block out two or three hours in the evening or maybe it's a weekend where you block out four or five hours and you just sit with yourself, journal, write your ideas down, write down some of the reflections of the week on you know how was I feeling what were the things that excited me what were the things that had no meaning at all for me if I was to rank myself from like one to ten one being you know absolutely dirt and disgusting and uh, depressed and then ten being you know exceptional amazing living in my purpose feeling incredible feeling empowered where would I kind of rank myself and if you do that for enough days and weeks and eventually months you can kind of have a bit of a track record in terms of where am I kind of resonating or generally gravitating to? Like if 10 is an absolute standout, you know, fantastic, amazing, living my best life, girl, um, and then one is like zero, like I literally want to slip my wrists, um, then, you know, and you're occupying a four most of the time, then that's quite alarming, right? And it's a sign that some things in your life or some things that you might be busy being busy with need to potentially change. And I'm only sharing this because this comes from experience and it comes from um, massive, massive, massive levels of action and activity and push and focus into one specific area. And then having to course correct and readjust and realign yourself or myself personally, realizing that the things that I'm occupying my time with don't actually hold any meaning. And the thing that you thought you wanted isn't exactly all it's cracked up to be. Okay. And this is kind of, for the most part, I guess most things. You buy the nice car and the anticipation of what the nice car is going to be for you always, always, always is better than the actual thing itself. I mean, for the first you know two to three weeks, maybe month, two months, um, it's fantastic. It's amazing. Like you think about it all day, every day. But then after a while, you're like, okay, well, it's cool. Like I love it. It's, it's fun, but it doesn't actually bring me any sweet happiness. But man, I'll tell you what, when that thing's coming for delivery and it's coming here on the back of the truck and you are like, oh my goodness, this thing, I can't sleep. I'm so excited. I can't wait to drive the first time it is the best thing in the freaking world right so the anticipation of the thing is always different or slightly more jaded than the actual thing itself and so for you as you're on the pursuit towards your goals i think the key thing to measure and keep in mind and focus on is what is the overall state of being that i'm in and if you go through and measure and actually track this on a daily or or weekly basis at minimum weekly i do it daily personally like what was my level of clarity in 1 to 10 what was my level of overall happiness in one to 10? What was my level of influence in terms of one to 10? How well did I influence and persuade and like get my point across to other people from one to 10, right? And all of these things I look at on a daily and then eventually weekly and then eventually monthly and quarterly basis to see like the overall average of these areas because if the average becomes constant, then that's gonna be your personality and you'll eventually become a person that starts to live a life that's just kind of boring and a four out of 10. And the thing is guys, you're never gonna live in a life of exceptional quality, super high standards, massive wealth and success if you are constantly in a four out of 10. It's gonna wind you up down at the pharmacy asking for some freaking like antidepressant medication because your brain is gonna be jacked up. And I'm just saying this because it's the truth and I'm just saying this because I've been there. So I'm coming from a place of love and concern when you are on the hunt, okay? So a little bit of a different message for you today and I hope this hits if you're out there on the hunt. I'm not in any way, shape or form saying slow down, keep burning it and keep pushing it and keep moving forward. Make sure you're aligned with your vision. But I'm just saying measure and track and report on the level of your emotional state as you are on the pursuit, because the more consistent and the more constant the state is that you feel, whether it's a seven, whether it's a four, whether it's a one, whether it's a 10, that's going to become over time your overall personality. And then you will just become, and the thing is the really, really, really important thing about this is this, you will begin, say for example, you're a four, 
right? So for example, like you rank yourself over the whole course of the next month, and then you're a four, right? Just say like overall, your state's about a four. Now what happens is unfortunately or fortunately, you start to attract other fours into your life because you're a miserable fuck, and then your whole life is miserable, and then your state is miserable, you begin to attract other miserable fucks into your life. And then what happens is your whole circle is miserable and misery loves company. And the more things that you talk about that are failures and fuck ups, um, the more misery you will experience and the more people will share their misery with you and it will actually make you feel better. So you will hang out with losers and people who are miserable. And this is the slippery, slippery slope that you've got to pull your fucking reins on right now if you're heading in this direction, all right? It's been a long, hard couple of years with COVID and all the bullshit that's happened. Interest rates are rampant. Inflation is going through the fucking roof. This is the time right now to take massive inventory. We're heading into the final 10 weeks, eight weeks of 2022. Think about that for a second. You've got about eight or nine weeks left to make a solid, hard, consistent decision on your future. And are you doing the things that you wanna do right now that you actually choose to be doing for the next two, three, four, five, ten 10 years in the future? If not, make some fucking changes, take inventory, track yourself for the next eight weeks. And I hope this has smacked you in the face a little bit because this is a very, very, very serious fucking topic. If your life isn't where you want it to be, understand that you have complete agency to change. It is in your hands, no one else. No one else is gonna come and save you. No one else is gonna come and be the fucking like hand of God to sweep you off your feet and make sure that everything's okay. It's on you. Take inventory, take responsibility, take fucking action and change. Right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, just feel free to share it. Feel free to let me know what your what your best key takeaway is. If you got any particular points of value from it, I'd love to know what they were. And I'd love to see this in action. I'd love to hear what specifically you are doing because of listening to this episode that's actually benefiting your life and your future moving on. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next Monday. Have a great one.